Now let's move on to gastric adenocarcinoma. So this is a malignant conversion of gastric mucosa. It's going to present with early satiety. You're not going to be as hungry if you have a tumor that's take, occupying a lot of the, the lumen of your stomach. You can get weight loss as you can with any cancer. You're going to have abdominal pain and you can get anemia because the cancer can bleed. You can have an iron deficiency anemia. There's two subtypes we need to know about. There's an intestinal subtype and a diffuse subtype. So let's talk about each of these really quick. The mechanism by which the intestinal subtype forms is the mechanism we've already been talking about, where you have metaplasia that turns into dysplasia and turns into adenocarcinoma. So we've already seen this, for example, with chronic autoimmune gastritis, we've seen this mechanism in place. In diffuse, uh, in diffuse gastric adenocarcinoma, you don't have this pathway. You actually just have an e adherin mutation that forms diffuse uh, adenocarcinoma. So let's talk about risk factors. We know some of them over here. It's going to be things that cause chronic inflammation because chronic inflammation can cause metaplasia or cause a dysplasia and lead to this pathway. So we've talked about chronic gastritis as a precipitating factor. You can also have smoked foods can cause chronic irritation, smoking. And if you're blood type A, which is interesting, that's actually a risk factor for this as well. For diffuse gastric adenocarcinoma, it's not related to any of these risk factors. It's just a spontaneous e adherent mutation that can cause it. And where are these located? So for intestinal gastric adenocarcinoma, it's usually on the lesser curvature of the stomach as an ulcer with heaped margins, which we've already seen. We've already seen those gastric ulcers in the past. Whereas in diffuse gastric adenocarcinoma, it's the name speaks for itself that, that there is diffuse stomach wall thickening. So we've seen this picture before. I just wanted to point out that that gastric ulcer that looks malignant, that's the intestinal type of gastric adenocarcinoma. And it's, you'll, you'll see it described as a poor, with poorly defined borders and heaped up margins. On the other hand, our linitis plastica, this diffuse stomach wall thickening, that looks like this on imaging. So here on a normal stomach, you can see how thin the wall is normally, very pencil thin. But if you look at the stomach on the right, you can see how thick the stomach is. And that's called linitis plastica, that's diffuse thickening. How they like to test both of these gastric adenocarcinomas, they want you to know some of the perineoplastic presentations for each of these. So either subtype of gastric adenocarcinoma can present with metastases to the liver. And when we talk in the liver section, I go over a section on liver metastases. And as you can see, the most common primary site of liver metastases is the GI tract. So if you see a picture and they show you this, you see a bunch of spots in the liver. I want the first thing I want you to think about is it's some sort of GI tract tumor, whether that's a gastric adenocarcinoma, colon cancer, pancreatic adenocarcinoma, you have to use your best judgment to find the exact primary, but it usually comes from the GI tract if you see liver mats. And now some of the perineoplastic presentations, you'll get this thing called the lesser tree lot sign. You can get something called acanthosis nigricans and the Verkau node. So let's go over each of these three presentations so you're aware of them on test day. The lesser tree lot sign is an onset of multiple seborrheic keratoses. So what, what are those? Seborrheic keratoses are these, uh, these darkened skin changes that you'll find. These can be normal in older age. I don't want you to think that anybody who has these has gastric cancer, because that's not true. But on a test, if you see somebody who comes in, they're having weight loss and early satiety, or they're just having this abdominal pain and they notice this, this new onset of these skin changes, your brain should be really considering gastric adenocarcinoma until proven otherwise. The next thing we should talk about is acanthosis nigricans. This is a hyperpigmentation in the body folds and skin creases. So it looks like this. You can see it on the neck and the armpits. And again, I don't want you to think somebody who has this has gastric adenocarcinoma because it's in addition to be being associated with tumors, it's associated with obesity, 
diabetes, insulin resistance, polycystic ovarian syndrome. There's a lot of things that are associated with this. But again, it could help you if they give you somebody, especially somebody who's older or who has a risk factor, and they're presenting in a way that sounds a little bit like cancer, and then they show you this picture, then I really want you to think about gastric adenocarcinoma. And the third sign here we're going to go over is the Virchow node. So the Virchow node is an enlarged left supraclavicular lymph node. And this suggests that the, the tumor has already spread from the primary gastric site into the left supraclavicular node. So here you can see this left supraclavicular node is enlarged. They usually won't give you a picture. They'll just tell you that it's enlarged on a test. And how I remember Virchow as the left supraclavicular I like to remember Virchow and I put an O in front of it. So it's instead of Virchow node, I think of it as an Overchow node. And so when I see Overchow, I remember that the C stands for clavicle. So it's instead of Overchow, it's Overclavicle. I know that's kind of a complicated one, a mnemonic, but it, once you realize that mnemonic, I don't know, it worked for me. So some of these mnemonics I hope you use, find useful. This one might not be as much, but this is it's helpful. So. Just know that the Virchow node is an enlarged supraclavicular lymph node, suggestive of gastric adenocarcinoma. So now let's talk about some perineoplastic presentations that are exclusive to either the intestinal subtype or the diffuse subtype. So the intestinal subtype can present with something called the Sister Mary Joseph nodule. And so what the Sister Mary Joseph nodule looks like is a subcutaneous periumbilical metastases. So you can see the subcutaneous metastases right here around the belly button. I like to remember this because I remember the Sister Mary Joseph, it's very religious, and I think about a cross, and I know that the cross goes straight down midline through your umbilicus, so that's the way I remember it. And now diffuse gastric adenocarcinoma can present with linitis plastica, which we discussed already, and you'll see signet ring cells or Kruckenberg tumors. So let's go over what each of those are. So linitis plastica just means that thickening of the stomach wall. Signet ring cells, which we haven't talked about yet, these are mucin-filled cells with peripheral nuclei. And the reason why the nuclei are pushed to the side is because there's so much mucus being produced by these malignant cells that the nuclei has no space in the middle anymore. It gets pushed to the side. And so you can see there's several signet ring cells here, but you can just see the ones I circled. And just so you have a depiction of a signet ring, that's kind of what a signet ring looks like. And the last thing we wanted to talk about was that Krukenberg tumor. Those are bilateral ovarian metastases. And if you biopsy either of those lesions, you're going to find signet ring cells there as well. And I want you to realize on test day, if they ever describe somebody with bilateral ovarian metastases, you should think about gastric adenocarcinoma. And they'll usually give it in the context of somebody who's also having a primary gastric cancer symptoms. So just keep that in mind. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content.